here to Richardson Plano Networkers, what networks where today in our BGN talk we're going to have Brian Dobbs. Brian has joined us before. He's a management consultant, has his own, own, own firm, uh, has a lot of things to cover, a lot of things to say. I'm mm -hmm. really excited to hear what today you found that you're, you're going to share with us because I know you said it was slightly different or you're going to, you had a pretty broad scope of things that we we're going to talk about or could talk about. Correct. And so I'm going to see what kind of mood he's in today, but he's helped a lot of business leaders in transforming their business and those kinds of things. So I'm sure that those of you that are here and those of you in the room and, and whatever are going to be uh, blessed by uh, what Brian has to share. So with that, let's give uh, Brian Dobbs a hand of applause and get started. Great. How's everybody doing today? Awesome. Good. Perfect. I want to talk to you about eradicating fear in order to crush your goals. Now, if I asked an audience who is afraid, nobody's going to raise their hand. Okay? They just aren't. Do we have fear points? Absolutely. What happens is we typically internalize or personalize that fear which sabotages a lot of things. It sabotages growth. It sabotages clarity. It sabotages your power. So what I would like to do today is introduce you to a way to eradicate that fear that you increase your clarity, you increase your power in your position. We'll talk about that. And we're also going to talk about how do you get your goals achieved and how do you get them accomplished without having the fear, okay? So we typically operate on this horizontal plane. This horizontal plane has money, connections, and then we acquire tools and resources. Each client that I have said, Brian, I need more cash flow. I need better connections, typically. And those are the two primary things that they're doing. So when they write out their goals, you know, and hopefully we're going to get into the fourth quarter. You guys are going to start thinking about 2018. You're going to finish strong. You're going to start thinking about goals. Do you want market expansion? Do you want to increase your revenue? Do you want scalability? Do you need a team? Do you need processors? Do you need better systems, better infrastructure? We have all of those things going through our mind. Typically when we're doing that, the endorphins are released in our brain. We're pretty excited, aren't we? We can map it out on a whiteboard. We can look at it on a piece of paper. We can get to a mastermind. We get extremely pumped up. And the reason we get pumped up is because creativity is released. Whenever creativity is released, again, it allows us to expand, put our shoulders back, head up. Because if you've ever gone through a true goal planning session, when you walk out of those doors, you're pumped up. You are on cloud nine. You are going to be able to crush it. What happens? <laughs> what happens after that? Why don't you take your goals that you've written down, you're busting out of these doors, you know the game plan, there is something that basically comes upon you that you internalize and personalize that sabotages your growth. You don't implement, you don't execute. Why? Because something out there, and this is what I want you to understand, you are the product of your environment. Does everybody agree with that? Yep. So when we are in an environmental system, or an operating system. Let's just go with an operating system. When you have an operating system and you do not have any boundaries, you have zero barriers, you basically are just going to walk out there. If it's raining, you're going to get wet. If it's snowing, you're going to get cold. If it's sunny, you might get a sunburn, etc. If it's windy, you're going to get uh, your hair messed up, whatever the case is. If you do not have those boundaries to set your own personal operating system, then you are subjected to anything and everything that comes along. I went in and I was talking to a, a person the other day. I said, hey, listen, I have this item. I need to get rid of it. Oh, well, that's a real pretty item. And that's, that's amazing. And that's beautiful. Where did you get it? And I told them I got it in Israel. And they said fantastic and they were talking to me and we were having a great dialogue there and 
there was a subtlety in the person that responded and, and was talking to me. They said, well, you know, Brian, this is a real difficult item to get rid of. It's real hard. Well, why is it real hard? And then I asked, why is it real hard for you to do it? They didn't have the answer for it. But it was going to be really difficult for me to get rid of it. So they wanted to take that pressure off of me because it's extremely difficult out there in the world. What was that? That was a subtlety, but it was fear. And all they tried to do is instill that fear inside of me that I would not operate and perform at my highest level. I wouldn't maximize my potential or the profitability of getting rid of that item on my own, but they could do it, but I couldn't do it. So if I internalize that and I personalize that, what I do is I'm like, oh, and that might be really hard. That's difficult. So I flipped it around and they said, well, we don't get any, in our industry, we don't get a lot of referrals. I said, hey, listen, guys, I still have hope in today's market. I'll refer my family members and my grandma to come in and purchase something from you. That's what they had told me. And they kind of smiled when I left their, their organization. But the whole point was, I'm not going to allow that fear to be projected on me. And I know that we're all in search of money, connections, tools, and resources. However, I'm first and foremost... I'm going to seek first this operating system. That is what I want. My operating system, the word seek has a root word of see, correct? If you don't know what it looks like, it's um, impossible to find it. You agree? Right. If I tell you that you have a brand new car, it's somewhere in the United States, I'm not going to tell you what it looks like, but it's beautiful. It is absolutely fantastic. Best gas mileage, best car in the world. It has seats and it has wheels and it has an engine and it is fully gassed up. Have at it. Go look. There might be a slim chance that you find it. Whole entire world. There's a greater chance you're not going to find it. Why? Because you don't know what it looks like. When you're setting your goals, you have the metrics. You have the processes, you have the infrastructure, you have all the data, the quantitative data that you need, and even some qualitative data. But what we don't look at, we look at all of these things, we're not looking at this operating system. How's the world working? Is it something that I want to succumb to? Is it something that I want to believe in? If this operating system is chaotic, then I probably don't want to live there. Do you know you can contain chaos, but you can't manage it? You cannot manage chaos. You can compartmentalize your life. You can compartmentalize your business. You can manage the compartments, but you cannot manage chaos. You have to contain chaos. Like herding cats. It, it is like herding cats. And a lot of people are in their life and their business. Guess what they're doing? They're just maintaining, trying to contain this chaotic lifestyle that we have, that we're drivers, we're Uber drivers for our children, we are, uh, we're teachers, we're educators, we are husband, we're wife, we are partners, we are business owners. We have a lot of hats. And the more we have a lot of hats, this, guess what? Our environment, our operating system changes drastically unless we understand what we're truly seeking so my operating system has a lot to do with this i subscribe to being happy can you be happy and afraid at the same time yeah you can can't you because you can have this internal thing but if i can help you get rid of that fear it's a lot better correct what about order wouldn't that be a good to have order in there i think so if, if you work with orderly structures, processes, and systems, and you have order in your life, and you have order in your business, it creates a better operating system. Peace. And then if you look at that, if that is your environment, it's hope. If I can help people establish hope as their operating system, then when you find the subtlety that comes in and disrupts happiness, order, and peace as your environment, whether it's discouragement, depression, 
fear or hatred or vengeance or uncertainty. There is a lot of that stuff out there. But if I can operate like this, guess what? I become more powerful. My demeanor changes. My confidence, my countenance, everything lines up. So this is going to be our envelope, your unique stamp on life. This is basically your purpose, your assignment. Here you are. If you protect your bubble in time of trouble, what happens is you will have a better congruency and consistency to who you are internally and externally. When I have fear in there, what happens is if I personalize it or internalize it, then my voice tends to go down, my posture changes, my countenance goes down, and I don't feel confident going into that appointment, going into that meeting, going to my house, going to my relationship, because everything has been stifled. Fear kills motivation. It kills dreams. It kills your momentum. It does. It steals joy. It steals peace. It steals your happiness. Because I can tell you that if you're happy, you're going to sleep better. But when you're afraid and worried and, and you're full of doubt or you're, you're, you're highly anxious, then that sleep pattern is interrupted. And guess what? When it's interrupted, you're rolling, you're tossing, you're turning. You're constantly bombarded with these things that you've internalized, which disrupts your operating system. So if I can help you understand what your operating system is, it's happiness, order, and peace is your environment. And that allows me to have the system here in order to fulfill the assignment here. So I have an dependence on my operating system. I have a independence. I'm 100% responsible for me, my actions, my attitudes, my words. And then I have an interdependence when these come in here. It's not a codependence. So money, let's take money. Money is a horrible leader. It's a great follower. People. We both lead and follow, correct? But if there are some people that, if you're the average of the top five people that you hang around with the most, <laughs> guess what? There's some people that you need to lead. And there's some people that you need to leave because you need to hit the next level. Doesn't mean they have to be mean to them, doesn't have to mean that they have to be, you know, ostracized, but it means that that toxin or their operating system is not congruent to my operating system which allows me to or causes me to get out of harmony both in my message and in my approach so physically i can be in alignment to my assignment but when i'm harmonious harmoniously aligned to my assignment meaning that i'm walking my talk and i'm talking my walk then i become more powerful so you have fear that kills and fear that stills, but it also destroys dreams, it destroys visions, it destroys hope completely. And if you ever ask people, again, if you're afraid, and, and I know in this environment it's easy for us to say, well, yeah, I've had fear before. But I can tell you working with my clients, there are certain things that they won't press into for the fear of, what if I can't reach as many people? What happens if I identify my target audience and I narrow that down so small that it's a perfect niche for me? We're like, that's 99% of the people I won't be able to reach. And sometimes that fear causes us to become more vague when we need to be more centered because it ruins clarity. It destroys clarity. It, det it destroys a sound mind. So to combat fear, I need that clarity. I need that sound mind. I need the power of congruency and the power of consistency in my life. And I need love. I need love for what I do. I need to love my purpose and my vision. But I also have to have love for others. I have to be able to operate and function because if I'm doing it in love and I'm standing in the power that I've been given to fulfill this role in my life, and I also have clarity or a sound mind, then my operating system and myself, we're completely aligned. Guess what happens when people look at me? They like it. Like, I like what you have. So it doesn't narrow my focus. It actually fine-tunes my focus to such an extent 
that other people are attracted to the liberty that I walk into or the freedom that I have versus being so watered down and so vague that I'm trying to reach anybody and everybody because I don't want to offend anybody and I never accomplish anything. But I had these grandiose goals. I had this huge vision. And if it's not narrowed down and you're, you're operating with a subtlety of fear inside, what happens? It clouds your vision. It doesn't allow you to think clearly. It just doesn't. So how do we eradicate fear? You walk in love. You walk in the, the power. Whenever you step into your true place, to who you are, authentic to you, who you are on the inside and the outside, you have a certain power that you are operating and functioning in that allows you to be completely congruent and harmoniously aligned, but it sounds better. It resonates better. There's a better feeling. Have you ever been to somebody and they're telling you this and it sounds really good, but you're looking and you're like, oh, something's wrong with this? You have this, this little twinge in you. There's a red flag. There's a yellow flag. And it's like, oh my gosh, I've got to get out of here flag, right? It happens. When we go into a, a meeting or we go into a, or an organization or if you go into a home and you have this, the air, you can cut the air with a knife. There's a tension in there. Something doesn't feel right. Why? Because their operating system is off. And when you allow other people's operating system to become your operating system, then you become a product of your environment, period. But if you have control of your operating system, then you can eradicate things. So if fear is an external force, then what happens here is it disrupts peace. How did fear come in? You let it in, but how do you let it in? This is really important. Uh, I think maybe two ways. One is you, you import it from your experience, from your past. Okay. And the other way, uh, I think, is you import it from other people. You accept other people's opinion of yourself. Correct. So, but your internal one actually came from two main sources go ahead you doubt yourself you lack confidence in your own ability exactly so but that's your frame of reference correct how did you get that picture into your frame of reference um, i'm going to go a little deeper here way was, back when somebody told you you couldn't do it or that wasn't the right thing to do exactly or, right you either saw it or you heard it correct yeah. your reptilian brain comes in. right so you cannot get past your frame of reference because you're what you're seeing and you're hearing. Case in point, if there is a tragedy and it's broadcast everywhere and we're, we're watching it on television, we're not even there, what happens to us? Heart sinks. We go into panic mode. We're afraid. Afraid be, being, we're paralyzed. We don't do anything. Happened to us at 9-11, right? I mean, it's, it just paralyzed the nation. But what happens when a bank robber goes in to, to hold up a bank? What do they do? Do they just start shooting people? Typically not. What do they do? They speak a word, and guess what? Everybody hits the ground because they're afraid. So that fear paralyzes, but that fear came from an external into my operating system. Now, what happens? You go to the Mavericks. Mavericks are playing horrible. Not every game, guys. However... This time, the announcer gets up, and he says, I need everybody to stand up and shout, and we're going to yell defense, right? What happens? The audience, the fans, get up, and they start cheering, and they start clapping. What they are doing is they're energizing the operating system in that arena that hopefully changes the momentum of the team. You can energize with your words, and you can paralyze with your words that so can other people and if you catch it it's better to catch it here correct outside of the bubble than inside of the bubble so if i have it inside my bubble i will not subject myself to fear i get rid of all fear i talk to myself 
do it in the car. So if everybody thinks I'm on the phone, they don't think I'm crazy, okay? <laughs> it's fine. You don't have to be weird and loopy about that. But if you got, if it came in by words, it can go out by words. It's easy as that. It's not difficult. And if excitement can come in by words, it can go out by words. Also by what I look at. So if you're not guarding what you're looking at and what you are hearing, then what happens is you will be open and porous to anything and everything to come into your environment. But if you can keep this operating system that I am happy, I do have order in my life and I have peace. I'm full of power, love, sound mind. I am full of confidence, boldness, courage. And when you can do that, what happens, shoulders go back, head goes up. I have my plan. I know I'm going to hit some obstacles. That's fine. It's the name of the game. But I can conquer this. I can overcome this because I filled my atmosphere, my environment, my operating system with the courage that I need to overcome the obstacles, to conquer the things that I need to conquer, to be able to operate in love, to help people in my business, in my life, and acquire the money and the people and the tools and the resources that I need to be successful. Does that make sense? So when you ask yourself, am I operating in fear? A lot of us, again, that it's not the big, huge, audacious, bold things that really haunt us. It's that small, little, subtle thing. There, there's actually a, a scripture that says a small fox spoils the vine. It's the small things. It's that small subtlety. If I didn't catch it from that person, I would believe that things were hard to sell. They're not hard to sell, guys. It's not. Maybe it's not the market. Maybe it's not the audience. Might be a lot about my confidence, but a lot of times it's about the confidence and the communication. If it's clear, concise, compelling, you can rock the deal. You just can. In your business, you do the same thing. In your life, you do the same thing. You know who the best salespeople are? Children. They're amazing. Do they have any fear? Not a bit. <laughs> Not a bit. I have three teenagers. They will ask me for anything at any time for any reason, and they're expecting to get it, aren't they? Yeah. Yes. Why? Because nobody has told them that they can't do it. And they haven't seen anything on YouTube because that is the only educational station that they have now as kids is YouTube and their phones. But they are going to continue to ask and be persistent until they get it because they have not seen or heard something that would contradict that. They haven't. Now we're adults. Guess what? We've been exposed. We've allowed a lot of things to come in, and the reason we allow a lot of things to come in is because we become politically correct. We're like, oh my goodness, I don't want to, I don't want to offend anybody. I don't want to hurt their feelings. I can just tell you that me being completely congruent to who I am, authentic self, perfectly aligned in my message that I walk my talk and I talk my walk, is more refreshing and comforting to a lot of people that I didn't even think I could reach. It is. They're like, I like that. They don't have to be like me. And I didn't even ask them to be like me. I asked them, hey, listen, wouldn't it feel good if you could just be you? Do it out of love. Do it out of being polite. Do it out of kindness. Do it out of gentleness and mercy and grace. That's fine. However, but if I can be me, that's great. It gives them the freedom to be them if they want to be. I teach my children every single day. If I can instill something in there, hey, listen, I just want you to be you. Be happy with it. Be excited about that. Because when it's you, then you are guarding, you're safeguarding your heart. You created the boundary, just like your rib cages is, is the boundary for your heart. No different. So my heart goes to here and then it stops. It will not exceed the boundary of my rib cage because it keeps it there. Because out of my heart comes life. So if I know that, then my children, if I can teach them how to be congruent and authentic to who they are, then they don't have to let fear come in. They don't have to let doubt come in or discouragement because they are who they are. And they can get better. They can continue to grow. They can continue to develop. Now, the other thing is our brain. Our brain has a skull around it. It's pretty great. 
okay? It does help us if we fall down on the concrete, okay? So we don't wreck our brain, we just bruise our head when you have a big old knot. <coughs> if you were ever called a knothead as a child, I apologize. I was called that. And I didn't really understand that until you fall down and you actually do have a knot. So, it's a joke, guys. You can laugh a little bit. It's not a scary presentation. So, your brain, if you protect your thoughts, what's coming into it, it has to get through this hard surface. What you're able to do is to evaluate before you allow it in. Because too often, we'll take something and we're like, oh, that was a horrible meaning. And guess what? We walk out those doors, we hit the car, the parking lot, we get in our car, we don't have the radio on, and our brain starts churning. Okay, it processes, and then we're like, what if they didn't like me? And then we get into this fear mode. Well, what if they're, what if they, what if it was true what they said? What if it wasn't? If you do know who you are, then you're able to safeguard yourself from allowing fear to come in. Fear kills, it destroys, it, it, it steals. And if you'll safeguard yourself from it when you write out your goals for 2018, when you set your, your expectations, then what you'll also do is you'll set your mind to filter in anything that comes into it. You'll set your heart to know it's not supposed to exceed the boundaries. You'll begin to listen and look for things that will build your confidence and your strength and not destroy it. Because that's what fear does. And if you can eradicate fear, as subtle as it is, it's like a thief. It's quiet. It's subtle. It did not come banging on your door. Okay? It's not the big giant, guys. Fear is subtle. That's all it is. And if you can eradicate it, you can get rid of it with your words. Get rid of it. Just And, and you can go into your, your private time if you pray or if you do your meditation or your devotions, whatever. If you just want to sit in your car, ask yourself, is there any area that I have fear in that I'm not operating at my optimal level, my peak performance, and I'm not operating with the best efficiency and effectiveness? What's the harm in asking yourself that question? And then whatever it is, you'll find little traces that somebody said you couldn't do it or you saw something that it didn't work and, oh my goodness, the economy. Or, you know, it's, it's getting to be the end of the year, Brian, and a lot of people just take off for Thanksgiving and Christmas. I don't know if you've ever heard that. And we, and we believe it. But you're working, right? If you're working, there's 7 billion people out there. I'm sure there's some other people working as well that need you. I'm just banking on it. And I'm not even a gambling man. But I can just tell you that when you're working and other people are working, there's probably some business to be had. My best quarter is fourth quarter. I love it. I do. And I don't, I don't worry about, you know, Thanksgiving and Christmas. And even though... Those I participate in that, I, I don't I don't worry about that the whole world's gonna do it. There's something out there. We can go get it. We can still meet our goals. We can still beat uh, last year's results. You can do it as long as you beat fear first. Because that you internalize it, you personalize something that was never supposed to be personalized in the first place. Okay? You can personalize your license plate. Just don't personalize fear. It's not a pet. Just get rid of it. It is toxic. People you hang around with, things that you watch, things that you listen to, you can guard against it because you have the boundaries of your, your rib cage and you have a skull that will protect both your brain and your heart. So as you go through the rest of this year, purge yourself. Figure out what, what's in there. Are there any subtleties? You know what? I had one uh, just yesterday and it, it came up and I'm like, huh. Oh, that was so subtle, so little. What if you don't make it? Was that fear? What if you miss it? What if you missed it? Have you ever thought about, I want to fulfill my, my life purpose, and you're like, what if I miss it? What if I make the wrong choice, wrong decision? What is that based off of? Fear. It's not confidence. It's not boldness. It's not courage. It's not faith. It's not believing. It's not optimistic. It's fear. 
And that just kept on rolling like an undertow in the ocean. And I got rid of it. I'm like, I, I get rid of you. I don't need that in my life. And guess what happened? Clarity comes back. Focus comes back. Sound mind comes back. Now I can think and process correctly. It's fantastic. So as you go through these things, and when you're looking at goals, and you're looking at your, your, your next level, and you're looking at things, if you can see it, you can seek it. Look for your operating system. Look at how congruent and consistent you are with who you are. Are you your true, authentic self? And if there's any toxins in here, fear, discouragement, worry, anxiety. By the way, discouragement, anxiety, worry, doubt are typically fear-based. Right? They are. They stem from that. What's going to happen? So when we look at that, when we become this, then money begins to follow and so do people. It's absolutely fantastic when we look at that. Dave, how are we doing on time? Doing great. Yeah. 12.42? Yeah, we're doing good. Okay, good. So do you guys have any questions? Because I've covered quite a bit right there. Yes, sir. Could you just talk a little bit more about our operating system? Well, what does that mean to you? How can you define it in some different terms? Because I, I think I know what you mean, but I want to make sure I understand it. Okay, it, it's basically your environment. Okay, so it's okay. your environment. It's not your thinking process. What you no. surround yourself It is your, oh, okay. it's your, it's your environment. I was thinking your thinking process. No, no, no. It, it's not internal. It's external. It's okay. your environment. Okay. So, the, the scripture basis is Matthew 6, 33. Seek you first the kingdom of God. And if you looked at that kingdom, you look at a dome, and you look at a domain. Got it. And if you have a domain, you basically have an operating system. So you have to run to Romans 14, 17. And the kingdom of God is. If you don't know what it is, it's hard to seek it, correct? Mm -hmm. And it's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. So if I looked at righteousness, I would put order. If I looked at a joy, I would call it happy. If I look at peace, I just call it peace. Everybody's cool with peace. It's your environment. It's hope. Okay, thank you. Okay? That's great. That clarifies it. Any other questions that you guys have? Can you go back over what you the letters mean? Yes. Happiness is H. Order is O. P is peace. And E is your environment. I think the bottom ones are the one. The bot oh, money. money. Tools, resources, connections. I've never seen that before. That, that bottom. Yeah, I've seen the whole point, but I've not seen the bottom. Okay, so when I draw my envelope, you're in alignment to your assignment. You have a horizontal assignment, you have a vertical alignment. Okay? Well, I actually have a question. Yes, sir. Because, frankly, I, a lot of you know that I run my life by divine appointment. I wasn't really sure what... Brian was going to talk about today, but interestingly enough, for those who are in the, the Business Growth Network Insiders in the, in the Vision Challenge, I was actually writing day, Jenna's going to freak out with this, yeah, because you're I'm, supposed to be done Tuesday. I'm, I was supposed to be done Tuesday, but actually, if you've ever produced something like this, fear enters in, mm -hmm. but you start saying, okay, it's not good enough, and you keep going back, and you edit it, and you say, okay, I need to say this, and you need to say that. I promise I'll have it done before the weekend's over, okay? <laughs> that's that's the best I can promise, because I Monday want it morning, to... I want it... <laughs> well, you've already... There's three day, three three letters already up there. Stop negotiating. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, but, but I, I'm only sharing this because I run my life by divine appointment, so I allow things to come in, and sometimes you just operate on faith, right? Mm -hmm. you just kind of say, okay, I don't know exactly how or what he's going to talk about, but it's going to be worth... Well, if it didn't mean anything to you guys, what he talked about today was perfect for me, because when I go back to my office, I'm actually writing about the the... The fundamental, or the, what I call the hump day, the Wednesday of the five-day breakthrough challenge, and the, and it is now that you have this information, what are you going to do with it? And you have two choices: one is to operate with abundance, faith, and the other is to operate in fear. And what happens? That manifests itself in what excuses and okay, I can't do this. Oh, I don't have the time. I can't complete the challenge. I'm not going to, you know, my, my wife has this, my son has that. You come up with all kinds of reasons. And the point is that Brian's making here is that was just what I needed because I needed to remind myself of this very thing to benefit and be able to help people 
and I do the same thing. Maybe I'm not going to finish. My fear entered in. What slowed me down in working on the, Jenna's got, uh, deadline that she's got to have so she can complete the rest of the work right. is that it was that, okay, is this good enough? Is this is, is this is complete enough? The fear of that. Right. And I am past that. So, you know, any thoughts you have along those lines? I mean, is that in sync with what you're, oh, you're saying? And, I mean, it sounded like a, like a lot of synergy to me. So, yes. But um, anybody else have any questions? Randy for, yeah, I mean, for just, Brian? I don't want to, if anybody else gets stuck, because I always have questions. But, sure. Um, it, it's interesting. It, it, he's already heard me say this. These kinds of talks seem to happen at just exactly the right time for me personally. Sure. And so I, I moved down here, didn't know anybody. You know, I had all my contacts were in the north, and so there's been a lot of fear that's entered into my life. But um, we started Bible study again this Wednesday night, and and I just woke up the next morning and said, I'm letting fear take over my life. So I turned fear over to God, and and it, he came in. What did he say? You, you look really good today. Yeah. Because it, I can feel it. Yeah. Okay? yeah. I got rid of fear. God's gonna deal with fear. I gotta deal with all the other stuff. Exactly. And I don't, you know, I'm, for those on the network, I mean, this is not a Bible study, but, right, no. you know, some of us uh, have strong faith and it drives what we do. The exactly. thing is, regardless of who you give attribution to, right. even if you don't give, it to even if you don't give right. that attribution, right. the universe, right. there is truth. Right. That's right. The universe, if you want to call it the universe, right. if you want to call it whatever, right. it doesn't matter. Right. Truth right. is truth. Just don't call me truth. Truth is truth, Right. You say, call it science. Uh, well, the universe is conspiring in your right. favor. Yeah. yeah. Conspiring in your favor. Yeah. yeah. I like that. When oh, you like, seek truth, yeah, and when you protect your environment. Yeah. That's cool. I never heard that. Any others? Any others? That's cool. So this is good. This is, uh, this is a very appropriate. I'm about ready to make the major decision for my coffee business. Okay. Moving into commercial space, putting in a lot of personal monetary resources. Mm -hmm. And it's yeah. nice to have this kind of talk. To help to understand the fear and, and ways maybe to help mitigate that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Get that role and develop confidence in, in the decisions that I've made. And, 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 a, and a plug for business growth insiders. Okay. This is all good, but you still need a plan. Right. Okay. So to put a little meat on the bone well, by putting a plan together, it doesn't mean it's just business growth insiders, but put a plan together. Mm -hmm. All right, test the plan in your head, make sure it's within your operating system, you can deal with the constraints, and then have faith to go forward with it. Well, interestingly right. enough, your eyes he open. said one thing that was very relevant, and again, this is, is fear negates clarity. Yeah. And guess what I'm working, day three is, clarification, clarity. Okay. And so, you know, and that's exactly right. And so that's going to be the enemy. When you're basically trying to, once you you've kind of got it out there, and you say, okay, this is really what I want to do, mm -hmm. and fear is going to creep in, and it's come into your life, and you've oh, already yeah. let it in. It's inside you. You got to kick it out, mm -hmm. or leave it there and continue to wish. Yes, John. Sometimes you cannot remove the chaos. So for chaos that cannot be removed, what do you do with that? Well, chaos is because there's, my belief system is chaos is the lack of clarity, okay? So if you put order in things and you compartmentalize, so I created the battery pack when I showed you guys the eight domains that you have for business. There's actually a, a battery pack that you can do eight domains for life. And when you compartmentalize things, then you actually put them in places, just like a home. So your, your chaos is you have the doors wide open, you have your windows wide open, you have critters and animals and children and all this stuff running around. You, you have, subscribe Jenna's life. You have, <laughs> you have stereos on, you have TVs on, you have the microwave on, you have that, that Venafan because you, you just burned your toast and you're like, oh my gosh, what do I do? Well, when you begin to step back, you look at it from a different perception. Your perception is your reality. But if I could take a broader view, expand my understanding, my frame of reference, then what I do is I begin to put things back in order. I begin to close off my doors and windows. I begin to lock up my animals, my critters, my children. I need them to sit over here. I turn off the Venafan. I reduce the noise. I begin to establish order back into it. 
because I can't manage chaos, I can contain it. But I can manage compartments. And when you learn to compartmentalize both on that business life, then you have that work-life balance. Mm -hmm. So keep the chaos outside of what your purpose is, what you're trying to accomplish. Let the chaos go on, focus on your stuff. I, I would compartmentalize, yes, absolutely. And it's, it's basically, when, when you're going through, let's say, a turnaround, or you're going through a transition or a downward spiral, spiral what happens is if you can get skinny, and I, I teach that for my eight battery packs and my eight domains that I believe in in life, that if I get skinny, it's faith, finances, family. Mm -hmm. And that, those are my three. So if I have something that, that's chaotic, I'm honing in on those three, make sure they're solidified, and then add my working out, then add back uh, my social circle, then add back my business or whatever it is, so I can make sure that I maintain good solid ground. That's awesome. I have a question. That's sort of okay, like we're going to have to wrap it, boys. Yeah, it's just a comment. And, and you said it, uh, fear is subtle, and it's even more subtle than subtle. <laughs> really, because, you know, it, it, it presents itself not as fear. It presents itself as obstacles that you have to overcome mm -hmm. and you created for yourself. So you, and you, the bad part about it is that you've been living these things. So it's normal. So, you, you know, you don't tend to want to change normalcy. So you need to understand, hey, this is not something that's productive or, or, or is, is leads towards success that I want to accomplish. So I need to evaluate, do I really need this in my life, right? But, you know, just understand that you don't necessarily see fear because it's so subtle that it's, it's normal for you. Oh, so you, need, yeah. you need to yeah. understand that. Yes. So a lot of exclamation points on your on your message today. Really, really great, Brian. I, has, has this been beneficial? Let's give Brian a hand. Yes. Yeah, I love it. And if, um, is there anything anything we can do for you? Anything any anything you're selling or yeah? Working or, I, I'm actually you know, doing a, um, a a ninety day program. So my business really tailors to small business owners, medium sized businesses. We work with you know, the, the owners and managing the employees and, and taking care of their business, taking it to different levels. However, I still work with individuals and I've rolled out a 90 day program. It's back to school. You can have the, the order form, but if you, you know, are interested, talk to me about it. It basically gets you on track. We identify some great things through our assessments and the metrics that I've created. The, the other thing, it, it helps you build what you want to build and get to the next level. It's a fantastic program, and I've reduced that quite considerably just to, to do the back to school so I can give. And I've reserved 12 spots uh, for the next, the, the fourth quarter to do that. So that's 12 hours of my time that I invest every week into to people that I can help. So that's my, that's the, the ministerial part. My passion is to help people and uh, part of my business. So. It's, it's a great thing if you guys were interested or just know of somebody that would could use that and get fear out of their life so they can propel then please uh, pass Do you have or or a website or I have or and or both yes sir okay, I have all the material back here thank you that's great all right and for those online we'll post that on the on the, the video feed and whatever but uh, again appreciate you Brian thank you uh, it's been timely for those who are here a little bit of housekeeping uh, if you love this Okay, remember, next Friday we don't have one because it's the holiday weekend. So this is the Friday before Labor Day. So we don't have a Friday meeting next week. Week after, I'm going to be doing with uh, Jenna's support, but we're going to, we have the five-day breakthrough discussion. And it's, if you love this, you're going to hear a lot of this and a lot more, and I'm going to introduce you to uh, give you one last chance to really get on the ground floor of the, of the relaunch of the Business, business Growth Network. Insiders, which is one of the reasons why the timing for that. The week after that uh, is uh, Lucinda Ruck. I don't know if you know Lucinda. She knows you, yeah, I know, I because know. her and I were talking. And I said, you know, I, we talked about Brian, and I said, yeah, I got to get Brian back. He did an awesome job. So uh, she's going to be talking about LinkedIn. And so anyway, so it's a lot of good stuff coming up for those who've never been. You new got new folks. If you haven't been to our Wednesday meetings, a great larger group of people, a little di a lot different format, predominantly networking. 
but it's a great place and this is a good place to do it. So anyway, thanks everybody for being here. I'll collect the dollars and that's about all we got. All right, thanks guys. I'm out of time. There's not enough time. There's not enough money. I'm not educated enough. Any of those things are the thoughts in your bag that limit you from the success and the potential that you have. So is I gonna let the thoughts in my bag control my life?